It may be a year away, but space enthusiasts in the St. Louis area are already preparing for the total solar eclipse next August. According to NASA's calculations, the southern parts of St. Louis City and St. Louis County will get one of the best views in the country. And as HEC-TV's Matthew Norton shows us, this is such a rare event. NASA is planning experiments during the eclipse to learn more about the sun. Sometimes people think that they've already seen one, but usually they've only seen a partial. On a hot sunny day at the University of Missouri in Columbia, Excellent. astronomy professor Angela Speck is looking a year ahead. Next summer, this part of the country will have a front row seat for a total solar eclipse. You may be thinking I've seen one of those before, but those were just partial eclipses. And they don't realize that when you see a total solar eclipse, it's completely different. It actually gets dark, really dark and you can see things that you can't see, like stars during the day, and be able to see the, uh, the corona, the extended atmosphere of the sun. From Columbia, where Speck is, to the southern part of St. Louis, to southern Illinois, a narrow band of Earth will fall under the moon's enormous shadow as it totally blocks the sun. And so what I'm really wanting to do is really just see this for myself for the very first time. I mean, it's going to be a tremendous thing. Don Ficken and the St. Louis Astronomical Society are spreading the word. Everywhere from the Science Center, where they sent 25,000 solar eclipse glasses, to libraries. And Ficken's trying to make sure local leaders know huge crowds from all over the country may be coming too. One of the frustrating things when I talk with cities, they go, Oh, okay, this is really cool. How many people came to the last one? Well, um, 1442, I have no idea. And so it's, it's do you, how do you plan for something like that? How do you actually know what to do with that? Did you hear him say 1442? That's the last time those of us in this area would have had the chance to see a total eclipse. But that's before Columbus arrived in North America, so only Native Americans saw that one. Total eclipses are so rare, NASA's sending a team to the Midwest and will be tracking the eclipse as it makes its way across the continent. Not just taking pictures, but actually conducting an experiment to see if Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity is correct. That theory is all about gravity. While Sir Isaac Newton, according to NASA, believed that space and time were fixed entities, Einstein said no. NASA's partners at Stanford University describe Einstein's theory this way. Massive celestial bodies like the Earth drag their local space-time around with them as they rotate. In other words, space-time can warp or curve. So can light. And the basic idea is that um, when starlight passes a massive object, it will bend. You can think of it as being like when light passes into water and it looks like a straw bends when it's in a glass of water. And um, that happens, and so it makes things look like they're in a different place. So normally when we see stars, we're looking away from the sun. But if we can see the stars close to the sun, they should look like they're in the wrong place. And so we can use an eclipse to test that. Now, it was done, you know, nearly 100 years ago. But because we have much better technology now, and also because it's unusual to have an eclipse that's over land and specifically over one country for such a long time. Normally it's largely over water, so it's hard to set up the experiment. But this time, she says, the total eclipse will last for so long, scientists will be able to see things that are fainter than you would normally see because the sun usually blocks their light. In towns south of St. Louis, we'll experience approximately two and a half minutes of total darkness. The eclipse will start out in Oregon at 12.15 p.m. our time, arrive in the St. Louis area at 1.17, and not reach the South Carolina coast until 2.49 p.m. our time. That gives researchers here in the U.S. about two and a half hours of viewing opportunities, depending on cloud cover. And research on the ground is a lot cheaper than sending a spacecraft into the heavens, as America did in 2004. An engine start, one Ignition and liftoff of the Delta rocket carrying Gravity Probe B, testing for truth and the physics of our universe. Which brings up a good question now, as it did then. People sometimes ask, you know, why have you felt you should persist in this way to perform a test of Einstein? Aren't Einstein's theories all established and confirmed? Now, this theory although there are some very important tests that have been made, is much less established experimentally. And it's an explosive theory, 
one that could explain why a star can collapse into itself, creating a supernova, among the most violent combustions in the universe which can lead to the creation of a black hole. Back in St. Louis, Ficken's astronomy group is getting more families interested in space by letting them check out these telescopes at public libraries. Of course, you never want to use a telescope to look at the sun or an eclipse, so Ficken's showing people how to properly use eclipse glasses. You never want to look at the sun for a while and then hold these glasses up and just simply look at it. So the best thing to do is put the glasses on by looking down, and then when you look up, It'll be easy to find the sun. There's no real reason to, to try to look first and then put up the glasses. Meanwhile, state and local leaders are already planning for an influx of people from all over the country wanting to see the total eclipse for themselves. Traffic will be a concern, as will the August heat. And there are 88 million people live within 200 miles. So for here in Missouri and Illinois, it's the middle of the day for the eclipse. You can have people 200 miles away who can set off that morning and be there in time. And they don't have to plan anything. Because, like storm chasers, eclipse chasers will be watching the weather forecast that morning and heading to the part of the country with the fewest clouds and the best chance to experience the darkness of this total solar eclipse. For Innovations, I'm Matthew Norton.